pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which Chris Lacacious? Don Mitchell? Here. Eileen Creamer? Here. Barack Facco? Kevin O'Donnell? Here. Lynn McGarry? Here. Joe Mass. Here. Thank you. Okay, we have a forum. Uh, the uh, section, the uh, next section uh, of the meeting is on uh, public comments. Uh, we we'll ask uh, anyone that's in the audience. Uh, here at the uh, at the hall tonight, uh, if you wish to speak on some uh, item that's not on the agenda tonight, but does uh, reflect some matter that concerns the planning commission. So it's time for public comments. And hearing none, uh, we'll go on to uh, the next section. Would be minutes. Uh, we do not have any minutes tonight to approve for this evening. And uh, so we'll go on to the agenda items, which are just one agenda item. We have one agenda item uh, to public hearing. We will need to uh, swear in any persons that wish to speak tonight uh, regarding uh, the, uh, the uh, item on the agenda. So uh, Mike uh, would ask that uh, Mike would swear in anyone that wishes to speak tonight. You just stand the just, just going to say I do after the following statement. Uh, please look, raise your right hand and say I do. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Thank you. Thank you. And so this uh, first item is uh, item number uh, F1, case number HG 1610-SP. The applicant is HMV. LLC for the property commonly known as Lot 3 in the Homer Town Square subdivision, located on the west side of Bell Road, north of 143rd Street, Homer Glen, Illinois. Mike, could you please present this case? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the commission, uh, members of the audience, um, my name is Mike Schwartz, I'm Director of Planning and Zoning for the Village. Um, I'd just like to make an announcement that we do have some power, but not a PowerPoint, but we've got some slides if there are any questions as I finish the presentation. And then we're going to let the applicant kind of add anything to that presentation. Um, but I may be switching seats just to let you know. I might have to run over there because the laptop's connected there. Uh, so in your packet is a, a series of uh, requests by the applicant for, um, first of all, an amendment to a prior issued special use permit, which would, which would be considered a major change to a planned development known as the Homer Town Square uh, Shopping Center. Uh, the second, or related to that, is a site plan, or what we call the preliminary slash final development plan uh, for lot three, which is the L lot. And then there's a request for approving a special use permit for a drive-through establishment uh, associated with one of the uses in that building. And then there's a special use permit for outdoor seating associated with the two restaurants that are proposed uh, in, that in that building. I'm not going to read them for sake of time, but in your packet is a series of findings of fact with which the zoning ordinance requires the plan commission to make um, in presenting its recommendation to the village board. Uh, you're at liberty to make changes to those findings that staff has suggested. Um, we are finding favorable to the applicant in each of the three uh, zoning actions that is before you. And those are, again, right out of the code, um, point by point. So what I'm going to do is just summarize, for sake of time, what they're requesting. Uh, the property, is, if you're not familiar, it should be. It's a two-unit uh, commercial building that's proposed. 
Um, one unit would be for a Starbucks uh, restaurant with a drive-thru attached in the, on the side. Um, and then the, the other space would be for a Chipotle restaurant. Um, the property is located on outlot B2. Uh, it's actually platted as lot three in the Homer Town Square subdivision. Uh, there is a location map and an aerial photo in your packet. And there are also uh, the very last attachment of your staff report there are photographs of the site. Uh, the site overall, the shopping center is 16.31 acres. The outlot is about 0 0.6 acres after it's reconfigured for replatting. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the, it's zone C3, the entire shopping center is zone C-3, which is the um, general commercial designation. And the uh, surrounding zoning is pretty much commercial in each direction. With the exception to the west, uh, the Gooding Grove School is still zone A1 agriculture. Um, there's a series of attachments. I'm not going to, you know, go through them unless there are questions. But essentially, what they've given is a site plan, uh, details of their trash enclosure, the elevations for their uh, outdoor seating area. Uh, there's a signed site plan with some details, uh, a landscape plan. Uh, exterior building elevations, which are also shown on the board up there in color. Um, and then you've got a material board, uh, if there are any questions about the materials, which are basically going to be the same materials that are used on the existing shopping center. What is not in your packet is the civil engineering drawings. Those are very detailed. Um, those are the grading and stormwater and utilities and all that kind of thing that's usually reviewed by staff. Um, and also there's a initially a plat of, sub, a plat of re subdivision was submitted for the application is still part of the application. Um, the applicant has requested that that item not be considered for a vote. Um, one of the conditions you'll see attached to the first request the, uh, is a request to basically defer uh, to the, the, for timing reasons, have the property re subdivided to uh, reflect the right-of-way that will be taken by the Will County Bell Road widening project uh, and reconfigure the shape of lot, outlots three and four, which is the Dairy Queen building uh, to the south. Do that later and uh, the condition would reflect that. So basically they're asking to um, allow them to build the building which part of their parking lot would, would encroach the current lot line uh, to the rear closer to Davidson's. Um, but they would then, as a condition, or the condition we've suggested and the board, the board would be asked to, as well, is to allow them to replat that lot uh, after, uh, essentially within a certain time frame prior, basically prior to the first occupancy permit is issued for whether it be Starbucks or Chipotle. They're the developers, they're going to build the building and then they have lease agreements with Starbucks and with Chipotle to use those spaces that they're creating. Um, so this would just be, they're going to replat, but they're asking to basically defer that down the road, timing-wise, so that they can start on the construction of the building um, and then agree to come in with a plat that would come back for you to, for you to look at, as well as the village board. Um, and the timing is be related to the, the Will County Highway, uh, or Department of Transportation. Um, Kind of summarizing again the different things that are being uh, requested. Um, they're kind of give you give you a little bit of history. The property was annexed by the village in 2002, and at that time the applicants willingly entered into an, an annexation agreement with the village. Um, the village was desirable. It was desirable that this whole shopping center be part of the village, obviously for sales tax reasons and so forth. So their annexation agreement is in your packet, and it's also been, uh, it'll be presented, it's in the village board packet as well. Um, the annexation agreement does have some language in it, which you probably saw, there's a letter from Menards um, seeking that, I don't, know, I don't know if it was put in your packet, it's in the village board packet, it came in late, late in the day as we were putting packets together. But basically the Menards is seeking um, uh, cross access be a condition of this project. Well. The annexation agreement, both for Menards, they have their own annexation agreement, and Homer Town Square, um, are somewhat, uh, there's no requirement that cross access be provided at any certain time. It just says both that the village, that the parties agree to work with the village to get cross access between the two projects. Um, there's some discussions over the years that have taken place, I'm sure the applicant can talk about. 
Um, at this time, we're, staff is not recommending any additional condition that would force that because the annexation agreement is still continuing and it's pretty clear that the annexation agreement is the governing document um, that it's a 20-year annexation agreement and it, it does allow them basically to continue working with the other party to try and reach an agreement. Certainly the village is willing to be um, to try and help facilitate those, those discussions between the two different developments and how we can make that happen. But we're not, um, staff is not recommending at this time any condition that would force the connection and put the cost solely on this applicant before you this evening. Um, just as a side note, the Menards uh, development uh, to the north has its own zoning action that's pending that will be on the, uh, the next plan regular plan commission meeting in July. Uh, and they're doing some site changes to expand the footprint of their building uh, and some of the storage area to the back, the lumber yard area. Um, so that'll be a similar type of project where they're gonna change their plan development, come through you for site plan approval and then go on to the village board. I just wanted to throw that out there that we will continue, staff will continue working with both parties to see if there's a, a way, a plan that can be put in place to make some type of cross access happen. Um, as far as the ordinance review, you have a major change is considered in the ordinance as anything that alters the, the street configuration, the parking, the, uh, the governing agreements, the layout, the architecture. This is considered a major change because there never was an official site plan approved for this outlaw. Um, in the annexation agreement, I will mention, it, it's in your packet, one of the exhibits to the annexation agreement is a conceptual site plan for, at the time, what was going to be a Dominix uh, fueling center with a, with a freestanding drive-through car wash. And the annexation agreement, basically the village was pre-approving that site plan, that conceptual site plan for Dominix uh, at any time that they should so choose to come forward with it. It becomes a moot point because now we have an actual development proposal with signed lease agreements. Um, so it's just, I put it in, the, it's in there, you may have seen it, but it's, it's essentially in the position of where the <coughs> outlaw is. Um, the special, the, or, the zoning ordinance requires a special use permit for a drive-through facility or drive-through establishment as the code refers to it. Um, and it requires a minimum of three stacking or parking spaces waiting in the drive-through line. This project is providing seven. So there's queuing for seven vehicles in line for the drive-through. Um, there's also in our zoning ordinance a special use permit required anytime in a restaurant or there's any type of outdoor seating. Um, this, uh, in this case, there are two tenant spaces as I've described. They each have their own front seating area facing Bell Road, so right in front of the storefront. There would be three small bistro tables with six total seats for each of the, so 12 total seats in front of the building uh, with a fence enclosure. There are gaps in the fence enclosure only where the center of walkway coming into the building and I believe at each end uh, where you would come off the parking lot into the space. We're still working with, with the client or with the uh, applicant on um, how that will work safely. Um, I've been to other Starbucks where it's a complete enclosure and you can only come in and out of the building. You know, those are things we can still work with the applicant, but I think we have to provide some type of pedestrian access into the building. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the, if you study the site plan, you'll see there are several breaks where that fence enclosure is. And that, those are details that staff can continue working uh, with the applicant on as we move forward through the review process. This is expedited, um, you know, due to construction timing. They're looking for approval from the Village Plan Commission tonight or a recommendation of approval. And then they're looking for uh, the special meeting at 8 o'clock would be the, uh, the Village Board consideration of the project. So uh, the, there are some, with uh, the Plan Commission doesn't typically get into lighting, but I'll just mention the, the applicant's plans that are currently in your packet. There's some missing information and we've, they've willingly and verbally several times indicated they're gonna comply with the village's siting, uh, light, site lighting ordinance, exterior lighting ordinance. There are only two new parking lot poles proposed for this new lot, um, but they need to tweak the uh, lighting uh, emission from those fixtures, so they might need to make some changes to the drawings that are actually in your packet. So one of the conditions on the first request is that uh, the technical, that staff's
technical review is, is necessary prior to uh, construction of, of the project. And then the other, of course, I mentioned before is the timing of the subdivision plat, which would reconfigure the shape of this outlaw. In terms of parking, um, there are, I should back up, there are <coughs> variances listed in your packet for the, the site. Um, the foremost is the parking. Um, the village code requires parking based on the employee count of a restaurant as well as the number of seats. So doing the math on the number of seats that they have, they're required to have 41 spaces on their site. Uh, they're showing 31 on the plan, so they're seeking a variation. However, they have a, a pre-existing shared, uh, shared parking easement agreement with all the lots in the shopping center that was set up uh, back when the property was subdivided originally. And that gives rights of access to anybody who would park in the shopping center, the right to park anywhere else. And as I mentioned in the report, um, they are actually over in terms of parking um, for what's required for the entire shopping center. So even though on site they're 10 spaces short, uh, middle paragraph of page seven, I indicate that the shopping center with the McDonald's included, because that is a separate subdivision that hasn't yet occurred, but it was approved. Um, there are 796 parking stalls in the shopping center right now today, and they're required under our code to, to have 715. So there is a, a code surplus of, of parking. There's 81 extra parking spaces per the, what the code requires. Um, I mentioned as a note in the packet that the future Will County Department of Transportation right-of-way acquisition, which is gonna affect numerous property owners up and down Bell Road, would impact about 90 or so parking stalls along Bell Road. However, the applicant has the ability on site to reconfigure parking and move drive aisles, and so the net loss may actually be less than the 90. Um, so, and I said it before, there are 81 spaces over in terms of the code, and even if, even if worst case scenario, Will County affected 90 parking spaces, it would still just about be at a net uh, balance of what they're required to provide. And I think they'll talk to how they can reconfigure some of their parking to meet the code. So I don't, staff does not have an issue with their on-site ordinance <coughs> for parking uh, because of the capacity of the entire shopping center. Um, the other variances that I will hit on briefly, so because we, we want to turn it over to the public, um, if you turn to page um, page 10 of the of 11, 10 and 11 are the last two pages of your staff report. They're asking to increase the allowable lot coverage of the site from 75% to 85%. And basically the, the zoning ordinance defines lot coverage as the footprint of the building and the paved parking areas. So that's a 10% increase over what's, what's there. But it's pretty consistent with what's already developed in that shopping center. This is the last outlot to be developed. Number two is to reduce the parking I mentioned from 41 to 31, um, but again, there's already an easement that allows shared parking among the different outlaws. Number three is uh, reducing some of the dimensions of the parking stalls by several feet. Um, in some rows, it's by two feet, in other rows, it's by a foot and a half, um, or half a foot. And basically, uh, the the applicant is claiming, or you know, and, and staff is generally understanding this as well, that the, the overhang of the vehicle that's required will be, be, be met by the landscape areas, you know, so cars can pull up to the curb, and that extra foot or half, half a foot is met through um, the landscaped area. So it's not, it's not a major, it's a small deviation from what we normally require, but it's pointed out in your, in your report. Number four is to allow, it's a long paragraph, but basically what it says is the village code for a building setback and commercial in this district is 45 feet. And we don't, and the parking regulations don't allow parking in the required front yard. Well, this is a, this is a development that predates the 45 foot setback and the parking set uh, regulations. So essentially some of, obviously the parking in commercial areas is going to be in front of the building. And so there's no way to be 45 feet back with the entire parking lot. It would be a large grassy area. Um, number five is somewhat related, the minimum landscape yard or front yard adjacent to right-of-way, which is essentially gonna be on Bell Road and upon the entrance 
to the south, the main entrance into the center, um, is a 30-foot minimum grassy landscape setback. They're trying to be consistent with the existing shopping center parking setback, as well as accommodating the future Will County right-of-way taking so that no loss of parking would occur on this property in the future. So that's where that, that number five comes from. Number six is uh, a site vision where the tra trash enclosure, there's really not a, anywhere great to put the trash enclosure, but this, as we've had multiple discussions with the applicant, is situated in the corner of their site. Uh, it's well, it's attractive, it's got brick on it, you know, it's well screened. Um, to address any site distance, is, distance issues, they have agreed with staff's suggestion to put a white stop bar and a stop sign in the drive aisle to the north. So basically controlling the intersection and stopping vehicles so that there's time for people to kind of see. Um, and there should be plenty of setback. You know, once the, if the gates are kept closed on that trash enclosure, there should be enough room and it should not be any kind of a, sa a safety issue. Anywhere you put that trash enclosure in the parking lot, it has to go somewhere. And this, this location made the most sense to allow the employees to get to it quickly and not have to drag garbage, you know, and so forth through, through the, through the uh, drive, -in, drive up lane uh, and so forth. So that was the ideal of, of, the, of all the locations that were looked at. Where the trash enclosure is right now makes sense. And it's really not in front of any other business. Uh, there is a row of parking that will remain intact uh, in front of Jimmy John's, in front of the Orient Cafe, in front of the private bank. Mm -hmm. Number seven is to reduce uh, the sign setback for a new monument sign up in the northeast corner of the site, which would be the new monument sign for Chipotle and Starbucks for this building. Uh, normally it's a 15-foot setback. They're asking for a 10-foot setback at the east property line and a four-foot setback from the north property. Number eight is the materials. Uh, in the color elevations you'll see on the board, you'll see most of the building is the brick to match the existing shopping center. The tan color is the ethos or exterior insulating. It's basic, it's a, uh, finish, it's a finishing system that's a man-made stucco, and it's pretty common for where they place signs because as you remove commercial signs over time, you have to drill in and out of it, and you wouldn't want to do that in the brick or in the mortar. So, and it adds a contrast to the building. Um, it's actually, there are, there's more brick on the new building than what they have on some of the existing shopping centers. So if you look at the photographs that are the last page of your packet, and then look at the, the renderings, the color uh, elevations, you'll see that the proposed new building has more brick on it than the current buildings. But architecturally, the building is consistent. Um, Staff has no issues with the architecture of the building, the landscaping. There's some minor, very minor uh, corrections and changes to the plans. The village engineer and the consulting engineer are still looking at other, uh, the engineering, the civil engineering drawings that you don't get in your packet. But those are ongoing reviews that can occur after uh, the, the, the site plan approval this evening or the site plan consideration. With that, um, that concludes the re staff report. And I'll turn it over to the applicant, um, Mr. Chair, if you want to have them <coughs> add anything, introduce themselves, um, and then open it up for anybody in the public who would like to speak. I'll we'll make a motion. To, uh, <coughs> thank you very much. Uh, is there a motion to uh, open the public hearing for case HG 1610SP? Yeah, a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. We have a motion by Dan. I'll no second. Have a second by Kevin. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Okay, the motion carries. Public hearing is open. Uh, we'll hear from the petitioner at this time. Uh, if you'd like to speak or you'd be at a presentation uh, regarding the case. Um, I'll speak. Okay. Great. Uh, my name is Tim Thanasaurus. I'm actually the property manager of the shopping center as well as the leasing agent. And I represent HMB LLC in this project. Um, Truthfully, I don't have a whole lot to say about the presentation other than the fact that I want to thank Mike uh, Schwartz for doing <laughs> such an eloquent job of stating the case. Um, yeah. You know, our, our plan has always been to bring uh, this outlaw uh, in with a really good set of tenants. And so we worked very hard with the Economic Development Director, Jamie Patch, 
to bring Starbucks and Chipotle into the center. And we finally, after two years of negotiating leases with them and, and working through deals, we finally got them to say, we're coming home with Glenn. So we've appreciated everything Mike has done, uh, quite frankly, in expediting, obviously, this meeting, which we thank you guys for allowing us to do this. And um, you know, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have about the concerns you know, going forward. Right. Um, you can either take the questions now, or maybe we should hear from the public at this time. But if you had more of a, you had more of a, a presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to um, Jim Sutter from uh, JW Stitch Architecture, um, architect of, of, of the building. Um, like, like Mike was going through, there's a lot of things here. A lot of impact on the, from the exterior and the interior. Uh, Starbucks as well as Chipotle had much, much impact here, um, but. In terms of the exterior, we wanted this, uh, the owners wanted this to match in with existing. So, you know, I, I believe we kind of match, or match this little element that appears in the whole thing. We're trying to match the brick. This is, this is not a, we, we want to kind of blend it in, kind of make this kind of finish the last piece of, uh, of the shopping center. Um, it's not an exact copy of it because there's a couple of elements in it that we don't really like. Um, the base, some of the base of the columns, there's like a, a concrete block which just have like a, a screen of uh, cement on top of it. It just becomes a maintenance issue. You kind of replace that with kind of a cultured stone if you're here. But the driver colors, the roof colors, granted that there might be a couple out there, but we like to uh, match the, the, the roof color of the, the shingles um, to the adjacent down um, the outlaw building. So we're, a major effort was to kind of blend this building in to um, the existing, the, 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 the existing uh, shopping center. <coughs> almost, you know, this element right there is almost a, a, a direct copy from, uh, uh, from the existing building. Site plan wise, um, you know, Starbucks, you know, the, the drive through, what a big issue for them. It's a big money maker and it's a, and it's a big kind of drive the site, drives people inside. So when you enter right through here, um, there's a directional sign here, there's a directional sign here, directional sign here. We, get, we, we look for uh, a, a kind of a, a sandwich customer to come in through here, around the building, come through the drive through come out, you know, circle again, back to the main exit up, 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 the, up the property. Um, uh, there, here are the couple, um, like the, the, the six in front of the Starbucks. The Starbucks would be the lower, lower uh, tenant. The Chipotle would be the upper tent. Um, there are the, seat, the exterior seating there. The fence kind of includes here. This is the, the trash enclosure. Um, it was uh, not the best place to put it, you know, you, out of sight, out of mind. But you know, the reality is, um, these are kind of a fast food, um, uh, you know, tenants. Um, the, the, the building provides a kind of utility room where all the sprinkler heads and all that kind of good stuff was, will be held. Um, as well as there's a, there's, a, there's a stair, there's a sidewalk out to the, out to the back and we're both um, tenants have a rear door and access to the um, trash enclosure. Um, we've modified a couple of driveways to line up with existing, dry, dr, dr, existing um, uh, driveways, um, as well as provide you know, the handicap right in front, directly into the building. Uh, so that, that, that kind of a, really kind of completes the, uh, the site plan. Um, this is kind of like the existing property line. The takeaway is approximately 20 feet. Um, but like I said, like uh, Michael said, we conform to the takeaway, the proposed uh, property line. Okay. Any other questions? Just a clarification. Um, the drive-through, is that for Starbucks only? Will it be two? Will it be shared? I didn't understand that. No, it would be exclusively for Starbucks. Okay. Chipotle will not have a, uh, a direction. Thank you. Mr. Chair, just one announcement too for the record. Uh, public notices were, I, I, should, I normally announce this, uh, the applicant, I checked all the uh, green cards, the certified mailing was done, all surrounding property owners within 250 feet did receive or were mailed notices. Um, so we have proof of no, pr proof of mailing is on file as part of the record. And also, there is a sign, if you may have driven by the site, there is a public notice sign on the site. And then by state statute, there's a legal notice that was published in the paper, actually for the, um, 
for the uh, last meeting, the regular meeting on June 16th, and action was taken, as you know, at that meeting to table this matter uh, to tonight's meeting. So uh, all, all due uh, notice was, was made for the, for the public. So with that, if you want to open it for public comments. Is there any uh, else from the petitioner that uh, was planning on speaking? No. Please, please, anyone okay, who would like to speak, we pick you up best if you yeah, come to we'll the microphone. Hear. Okay, we'll uh, hear from the public at this time. Just, uh, and is there a motion? There's a other, you made uh, a motion. We made the motion to open the public hearing. Yeah. Uh, Jack Boyce. That was done. Don I was just wondering, I, when Mike was talking, for some reason, I thought he said that there's going to be an entrance and exit on Bell Road, a new one. No, no, because right. that I didn't care for if there was going to be a new one because that takes away space, puts more people with ingress, egress, and well, you know, probable accidents. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> for part of the presentation, is there anything that's going to be put on the screen? Uh, with I have all of the drawings so that for the reference if there are questions, but sometimes okay. if I, I don't want to make the meeting go any longer than it needs to be, but there's a specific question about the architecture or a specific question about the site plan or landscaping, I can pull the drawings up and put them on the screen. I do have a follow-up question to the one I asked previously. The presentation seemed to indicate to me that a vehicle entering the drive-through would go around in a circle about twice from the time it entered till it got out. Did I misunderstand that? <clears throat> um, I guess the nature of a drive-through has to go counterclockwise. Um, um, in terms of um, you know, so this is actually the menu boards are back here, right? Um, typically, and then and then once a menu is you know, once an order is given, he'll come will come around here and stack the, the the pickup window is right here. So this long line of um, drive-through, instead of having it, you know, flipping it in front of the building, which you know we we think it was a, a um, to our advantage to the to the to the uh, the store's advantage is to have the entrance in the back come around. You do come through here and wrap around, and then you're out to the front. Once you reach the outlet outlot site, mm -hmm. is it one complete circle yeah. or it's, two? It's just like a normal McDonald's guy. One okay. loop through. That's okay. okay. Yeah. That's Thank you. Like the, like the one here. Except mm -hmm. there's no there's no north uh, access or right, right, right. right. You right. can come in and go right. behind it yeah, and you got come in here. Right. Right. Did you picture yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wendy's across the street and close oh, the okay. east? Entrance at the Wendy's, it'd be similar to that. Can you picture that? Have you been through that? Yeah, no, I have. Staff has reviewed the site circulation, and it's pretty standard for drive through type facilities to have this type of circulation where you do have to come around mm -hmm. the building to get in the line. Uh, it's, I suppose. There will be one person once in a while who will try and make a very, very sharp turn and try to get in the, if the queue is short enough uh, to come in to, to the uh, northernmost access. Uh, but typically, you do have to loop around the building to get behind the building to get in line. So, okay. oh, go ahead. Um, no, go ahead. Um, are there any plans at the point where you move to enter? Uh, the drive-through for a stop sign there. A stop sign in what location? Um, here's the okay. drive-through okay. here okay. coming so, off the uh, road right here. Before you turn or before you go straight to go into. That, that is something we can look at. Um, most of the, uh, the, the, the issue for safety is, is having a stop sign heading for the drive aisle that's heading southbound uh, near the trash enclosure. We did not feel that it, it's, you know, that's, we can look at it. I didn't, I don't think that didn't stand out to us as a safety issue. My concern is that sometimes traffic off of Bell World entering into there is going a little bit quick and 
That's almost kind of a hairpin kind of a turn to get in there to get to the drive-through. Yeah, we've, it would be close to, there's already a stop bar uh, just to the north, off-site, to the north of the trash yes. enclosure. So, um, yes. it would add, it's just adding one more stop. Um, and I think sometimes it becomes overkill and people tend to not obey by them. We want them to obey, obey the, the main stop there at the end of the, uh, at the end of the aisle. I mean, one of the things also on that issue of getting off of Bell Road, there's going to be directional signs that Starbucks is going to provide uh, in the first entrance to bring people in and saying that this is the drive-through entrance. As opposed to doing what you're saying, it's coming all the way around in the hairpin turn, that they'll hopefully take the first right to go into the center to come around the building and not have to do what you're suggesting. So hopefully with the directional signs, we we'll train it. What's that? Just a concern. Yeah, no, I, that's, no, I, I like that. Well, you have someone desperate for a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you may not be paying attention. So you're saying this trash enclosure, there's no better place for it, but is not, isn't it blocking view yeah. of Jimmy John's? Isn't it blocking the view? No, it's, it's, it's actually more in it's line with the middle part of that retail building. Yeah. It's, what it's is not blocking is right here. If someone is coming down here, they are not, until they are past the trash enclosure, going to have a clear visual for the florist and the tobacco shop is on the other side. One of, the, one of the things I'd like to distribute, I'm going to give copies to the village board as well. Um, you know, we, didn't, we did not include the civil engineering drawings in your packet because you would, it would be twice as thick. Um, but it's very technical. One of the drawings they did give us kind of late, you know, late, late notice I'm going to distribute right okay. now. And it's, a, it's the site plan of the whole shopping center um, with the proposed site plan superimposed on it. And I think that'll better answer your question. I think that will better answer your question. So the, uh, if you look okay. at the site plan, and you can see on the number three, the building with the number three is the building that we're looking at. And number four is the, the existing building with Jimmy John's and the private bank and mm -hmm. Orient Cafe. So it's more in the middle. It's and more. it's actually past the edge of yeah. Davidson's. Yeah, it's actually beyond what beyond was the, the fire building. stone, what, what was okay. the, the end unit uh, okay. of the main building. Okay. So that's a better drawing. And I'll, I'll have this, the village board members will get this as well. Mike, is there anyone else from the public that wishes to speak on this matter? We ask you to come up just because the the, uh, the recording sector it's easier to hear people on phone. Oh, yeah, right. no problem. All right, I'm looking at the uh, plan here. Could you please state your name? Yeah, for Jerry Coy. Jerry. Home with Lynn. Yeah, Paul Road. I you guys are they planning on putting in a sidewalk? Like out in front here, there was a sidewalk. They left out a piece. Not if they reattached it. Now they have a you know an asphalt bike path going to 143rd Street. And eventually, we're going to get sidewalks down Bell Road once they put in Bell Road. My I was in concrete business for 40 some years, and with that, every time we did a building, we had to put a sidewalk if it was by a street, whether it be a side street, main street, any street. Out here now in Will County, most of your subdivisions have sidewalks now, but they didn't when I moved out here. So, I'll try to answer. I think that somebody should be accountable here to say it's going to be a sidewalk under that whole shop and send it all the way up to 143rd Street here. But they're only building on part of it. But I don't. Some communities, one of them that I did some work for, the, the builder paid for half and the village paid for half. But at least they connected the, you know, that whole two miles. And like I say, something should be put in that eventually or now the sidewalk should be put in. Right out here is one too. There's two people when I came here walking. So 
there are use. So one, to try and answer your question, the village um, or development services director, I had a conversation with him, and I'm not as familiar with the Bell Road project as he is, but my understanding is that the county, Will County DOT, um, has is work, has worked up engineering plans, preliminary engineering plans for the roadway um, that right as of right now don't include a sidewalk. Um, and it would become a policy decision for the village board whether or not to pay for, because that would be at village cost to put that in. Um, this, you know, to have them at this time put a sidewalk in that eventually might get torn out um, is probably premature, but it would be something the village board could consider if they want this one little segment of sidewalk. Uh, you know, there are creative ways to do like cash and move or something like that. So. Eventually, the sidewalk could, you know, their very little por proportionate share would be paid for. Uh, but ultimately, in the big picture, um, that would ideally be done as all as part of one roadway project. All right. What I remember, and my memory isn't that great, but I thought that we were going to put in the sidewalks on Bell Road from 159th when they started on it, supposedly this year down Bell Road, we were going to put them on the west side of Bell Road sidewalks. It's possible, I, I don't know the because history. Because they're going to do it in three phases, from 159th yeah. to uh, something, and then 151st to 143rd, and then north. It's possible that there was early discussions, but I know each year as we get further along, Will County, you know, even five years ago, I don't know if they were as far along as they are today in terms of the design work and the funding for the whole overall Bell Road project. So that's what I was told by our development services director. Um, and that would be something, for a policy decision for the village board. But as of right now, my understanding of it is that the design plans do not include a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. It's like I say, there's a lot of people walking the streets and it's, it's ridiculous. And, you know, someone might die one of these days and it's crazy. But, you know. Uh, and I suggest that we put them in here. It's just my suggestion. That's a good point. I think it should be followed through with the final plan mm -hmm. on both sides. But I do understand not doing little pieces when they're going to come in and do the whole road. Right. The road is going to get widened and we're going to pay to have But I do think five years you now, need to talk about it when we do the road because yeah. I agree with John. I think it's it's, a, a, post -up it's a, post -up. probably a bigger picture policy decision more for the village board than the plan commission at this point because it's a major multi-property roadway project. Um, and that would be a decision because the cost would be to the village for putting in sidewalks. And so um, it was a decision, and most of this area is, for the most part, there are some parcels still undeveloped, like this outlot, but for the most part, most of the properties are already developed. So you wouldn't have a developer on the hook, as they say, to put a sidewalk in. So, um, you know, it, it, it becomes more of a village policy decision on sidewalks. And that, that's a, our Mike uh, Salamovich, our, our development services director, and the county DOT would have to sit down and, and discuss that. Well, it is part of the plan for 159th and this cost is split. Different, different, so that's different state, level of, right. different level different of government. Different level of government. Same level of state. Yeah. Right. I, I'm a big advocate of sidewalks myself, but I think right. it's a, it becomes well, a policy decision. We may consider <coughs> the work uh, as well. The trailways have been considered quite, you know, quite important uh, throughout the village. You know, it's considered that sidewalks would be an extension of that. Okay, was there anyone else from the public that wished to speak on this? Hearing none, I ask for a motion to uh, close the public hearing for case HG 1610-SP. I move to close the public portion of the hearing. Is there a second? I'll second. I have a second. Okay. 
All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. The motion carries, the public hearing is closed. Is there any discussion uh, by the planning commission? Any questions? No questions from Mike or the applicant? I can see there's no better place than this trash and This isn't a good one either. What was the height? What was the height of that? There is an elevation of the of the trash enclosure uh, in your packet. Yeah. Um, is it six feet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The overall height is six feet ten inches. But again, it, it's stepped back because of the gates have to swing open. The access point to the trash enclosure is pushed back enough that there is, it's not right up to the intersection. They have to be able to back a truck or pull a truck forward if it's an overhead lift. Is the, um, is the option available for this trash enclosure to have a sliding door versus a swinging door? I have not seen anything like that. Um, a lot of truck I yards. I defer to the architect. Um, there will be room on this one to slide. I don't think the end one. There's, there's actually a kind of a two, at two um, gates. There's one um, to the south and one to the west. Um, so west one could possibly have one. The one, uh, the south one could be able to, the one to the west one, I don't think there's enough, you know, wall space there to, to slide it. It would, it would, that would probably extend into the uh, drive out too. No, this is the one I'm... showing the, it looks like a menu board, and then a speaker box at the curve, am I correct? Could there maybe be a portable trash receptacle that would be put there to deposit? To a yeah, that's yeah. 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 On the turn. On the turn, the as well just, as if you look further to the first, that. second, and third, third yeah. car, just uh, past the um, pickup. These would be the waiting spaces where people might be cleaning the car up. Just to yes, clean. and dumping the garbage into the parking lot. It would have to um, be a passenger. Certainly. Yeah, I mean, I, I would take a look at probably two, maybe three opportunities to have a disposable where people can out the window and get rid of the yeah, trash instead of tossing it in the parking lot. Can you get everyone to do that? Right, <laughs> would be a great idea. Like, well, I know they used to do it at the Dunkin' Donuts here, and suddenly it's gone, it's and you it see like that again. It, so you didn't have to, like, you know, yes. throw yourself out the window. It's yeah, almost like a postage box yeah, exactly. where That's it's... Right. That's a great idea. I'd like to probably see it at, at the curve. And after the the pickup window, I think you know the location would yeah get, uh, that that'd be important because otherwise it would be bringing garbage to the site. We're not we're just disposing of garbage generated by the site. Uh huh. And people just have yeah, another you know, cars cars. Mm -hmm. yeah, that we said it's like you get garbage. something in a bag, someplace and you pick it up at the pickup window, someplace you can throw away that bag besides out the window. Yeah. Well, somewhere on site. Yeah. I mean, that lane is long enough with a queue for seven cars, there's <coughs> enough room for probably two separate trash receptacles that would ease the maintenance of the parking lot overall. Uh, you know, I mean, 
we're still doing, staff is still de doing technical review. The applicant has verbally indicated they would provide something. I don't know if something like that would rise to the level of another condition. If you no. feel strongly about it, you can certainly add that. But it's, it's totally up to you. And, and we would. Uh, I think would it would be a community friendly approach for them to voluntarily provide that. I like the idea. So you're looking for a minimum of one, one or two, depending on what would yes. work best for the site. One or two, whatever would work best for the sites and, and, and um, to Commissioner match. Payment, what we would do is make that, uh, yeah. uh, it's, on, it's on record, and what, what we would do is uh, prior to uh, the, the permit drawings being approved, we would look for that to be included in the site plan to make sure that that's taken care of. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I've ever had pushback from the people from Starbucks is smell. Um, they just don't like to have their customers smelling odors in my garbage. So I have to defer a little bit as to locations, but in terms of general, you're right, it helps us clean our parking lot. Mm -hmm. People don't buy as much, I suppose, when they smell a fat, foul tasting, you know, smell. So I just well, then put it after the menu board. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> After they've already ordered. <laughs> I don't. No, thank you. No, just a comment. I think our staff has done an excellent job in adequately and completely informing us of all of the conditions on this, and this is just going to be a great addition to the community. Mm -hmm. And welcome to a new business. Two, two new businesses. No, two yes, yeah. Is there there's no more, uh, more questions? At, uh, commission? Is there a motion for this agenda item? I will. Is there a synopsis? Oh, you've got it. Okay. The first motion I make. I, I move to adopt staff's findings as the findings of the plan commission and to recommend to the village board approval of an amendment to the special use permit which was approved under Village of Homer Glen Ordinance Number 03-003, Section 220-903C1 of the Code, to grant a major change to the Homer Town Square Plan Development, Section 220-1209D of the Code, <coughs> including approval of a preliminary final development plan for Lot 3 in the Homer Town Square subdivision, Section 220-902C and Section 220-902D of the Code, including certain variations subject to the following conditions. First, subject to village staff's technical review, preliminary lighting and approval of all required plans, and two, subject to the property owner's submittal of a plat of resubdivision for the Homer Town Square subdivision prior to the village issuing the first occupancy permit for the proposed commercial building on lot three for certain real property, which is zone C-3, general business district, and is generally located on the west side of Bell Road, north of 143rd Street in Homer Glen, Illinois. Case number HG-1610-SP. HNB LLC. And should we do motion one for a vote and separate from the other two? Okay. Okay, we have a motion. Uh, we have a second. I'll second. Second from Lynn. Candace, could you please call the roll? Sure can. Kevin O'Donnell? Yes. Lynn McGarry? Yes. Chris Locatius? Eileen Creamer? Yes. Don Mitchell? Yes. Brock Fox. Can you have the names of those businesses to put on any of this paperwork? 
It's within the staff report. So. So it, is, it is within the staff report. Yeah, and just to let everyone know, they're approving a site plan for a building uh, for two tenants. Uh, so we hope those tenants stay there a long time, but it certainly could be other tenants in the future. Okay, uh, we have uh, okay, the motion, first motion passed. Uh, <coughs> For motion number two, I move to adopt staff's findings and the findings of the plan commission and to recommend to the village board approval of the special use permit for a drive through establishment associated with the permitted use for lot three in the Homer Town Square subdivision, section 220, attachment two, table 2A of the code for certain real property, which is zone C3, general business district and is generally located on the west side of Bell Road, north of 143rd Street, in Homer Glen, Illinois. Case number HG1610SP, H&B, LLC. We have a motion by Lynn. Yes, by, uh, second. I'll second it. Second, second by Eileen. Candace, could you call the roll? Chris Locatius. Lynn Carey. <coughs> yes. Eileen Truman. Yes. Don Mitchell? Yes. Rock Fackle? Kevin Rodash? Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion for the third item? Okay. 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 So I'm just looking this way right <laughs> I will move to adopt staff's findings as the findings of the plan commission and to recommend to the village board approval of a special use permit for outdoor seating associated with two permitted restaurants. Section 220, attachment 2, table 2A of the code for certain real property which is zone C3 general business district and is generally located on the west side of Bell Road north of 143rd Street in Homer Glen, Illinois. Case number HG 1610 SP HNB LLC. We have a motion by Don. Is there a second? A second. A second. Okay. Can this be called roll, please? Yes, sir. Thank Don you. Mitchell? Yes. Brock Backle? Kevin O'Donnell? Yes. Lynn McGarry? Yes. Chris Locatius? Eileen Prim? Yes. Motion carries. We'll make an announcement. We'll let you know that the, your uh, agenda item is on this evening's uh, special <coughs> meeting agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, yeah, the next item for tonight's meeting is other new business, and there is no other new business. Uh, there is nothing. Uh, that, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. Then. Second. Second by Tom. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And the motion carries. Uh, meeting is adjourned. The uh, next uh,